Think Tech Hawaii. Civil engagement lives here. Would it help if I said I'm looking forward to this show? That's what I'm saying. I'm Jay Fidel. This is Think Tech Community Matters. Tom Yamachika, president of the Tax Foundation of Hawaii, joins us on a fairly regular basis to tell us what's going on in tax, especially state tax, but also federal tax as it affects us in the state. Welcome to the show, Tom. Thanks for having me on the show. We have four or five things we want to talk about. And the first, the first thing is the Wayfair case. Anybody know the Wayfair case? If you know what the Wayfair case is, raise your hand. <laughs> if you know, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> If you know what Wayfair is, raise your hand. Yeah. Okay, it's a pretty good internet site. And somehow it got to the Supreme Court about taxing internet sales in different states. What happened? Yeah, so uh, there, there are a lot of um, internet, sale, internet sellers. Uh, Wayfair is one of them. Amazon used to be the, the king of internet sellers, but, um, uh, but for various reasons, they started collecting Hawaii tax uh, as of April 2017. And the, and the issue was, well, when do these people who don't have a physical presence in Hawaii have to collect our tax, if they, got, if they have Hawaii customers, for example? And, and, the, and the old rule had been uh, that it's physical presence. So you don't have a store, you don't have people, you, know, you don't have uh, property in the state. Brick and mortar. Mm -hmm. Right, so if you have none, none of the above, then, uh, then you can make sales through the mail or uh, over the internet or wherever it is, and you don't have to collect the recipient state's tax. Uh, you still have to answer to you know where where you where you are, right? But um, but in in states where you don't have physical presence, you didn't have to collect or or, or pay tax because the Supreme Court had been ruling that uh, that the states don't have power to tax you unless you unless you have some physical presence in the state. Okay, that's up Wayfair. to up to the Wayfair case. Yeah, Wayfair overruled that. It, it, it overruled like forty years of prior precedent and said, "Okay, we're not going to do that anymore." Uh, the uh, the Internet age is here, folks, and uh, people are going into states and they, they they don't need a physical presence, so we're going to treat them like any other seller, basically. And so you've got. Uh, you know, and, and, the, and the previous rule was, was in a way unfair to the, uh, the bricks and mortar sellers, you know, who had employees, who had stores, who had, uh, you know, a, 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 a presence in the state that was, they were helping the local communities and stuff like that. Uh, and they were facing competition, sometimes very stiff competition, from these online sellers. M matter of fact, I, I've, I heard stories all the time about how, you know, in, in modern day, uh, you know, people would go into a store, they take a look at the merchandise, uh, find something they like, and then order it online and leave the store. Often. Often. Yeah. yeah. But there was something uji about it, wasn't there? <clears throat> I mean, it's like cutting the corner somehow. You go into the store, um, you take, you take the, you search to find the item, then you order it online. You don't pay the tax. Um, there's something uji about it. You're bypassing something. You're, it's, it's, I wouldn't say cheating, but you're doing something doesn't not entirely fair to the local brick and mortar uh, store. Yeah, uh, I mean, the, the law did provide that if you did that, you as the buyer were supposed to pay the four percent right. tax. Right, the, the use tax, it's and the use tax, tax is the same in that context. It's four percent, but right. nobody ever paid, and the tax office never did anything to collect it. They, they, they do collect it on like bigger uh, consumers like businesses, but individuals like you and me, almost no, almost no chance. Yeah, it was unenforced you know, as far as consumers like you and me. Yeah, yeah, and, and it wasn't, wasn't just here, it was in pretty much every state that had a sales tax. Interesting. Yeah. Okay, so now the Supreme Court has changed that. I mean, what, can you say what the considerations were? Was it just a matter of catching up? Uh, you know, knocking off a 40-year precedent uh, and saying, sort of recognizing that the internet is bigger than we thought, that it's no longer this, uh, you know, strange animal that we don't fully understand. Now we understand it, and we're going to treat it like any other retailer, and it doesn't matter if it has brick and mortar in the state. Yeah, um, that, that's, that's basically what it is, I, I but think. What, what led them to do that? Was there any political consideration? Was there a, some kind of pressure on them, some kind of argument made by some constituent industry, one kind or another? Uh, that made them go that path. Well, the, well, the states were clamoring for it for a number of years. Uh, they were they were losing out on revenue. They, 
you know, were the ones who tried, who, who had to uh, strike the balance between their bricks and mortar retailers and their online competition. Uh, they wanted to get their revenue to, to fund their own governments, and they weren't getting it. And for the same reasons as we discussed, they, you know, had difficulty, you know, getting it out of their own people when they were customers. Uh, you know, of these online sellers, the online sellers didn't pay tax. Yeah. So um, the problem is in a state like Hawaii, where we have a sort of plenary um, a GET, gross excise tax, it applies to everything. There are virtually no exceptions to it. And it has an effect of, of more than 4% or, or 4 point, was it 7, 1, 2%, depending how you calculate it. Um, and um, it, ha it, has, it has a regressive effect on people. And, and that means that the, the guys in the lower brackets are really paying a higher percentage of their disposable income than the guys in the higher brackets. And, and it is regressive in the sense that it, it, tr it, it takes a bigger bite, relatively speaking, out, out, of, the, out of the disadvantaged uh, groups in our community. Yeah, that, that's a problem with sales tax generally. Yeah, yeah it's, right, it's sales aggressive. tax in general, yeah. yeah. But our sales tax is special because there's no exceptions, no exemptions, not even drugs, nothing. Um, and so uh, it, has a, it has an effect on us, maybe a bigger effect here than in another state, which has exemptions for various things, drugs, food, whatnot, yeah. Yeah. I don't think the ledge is going to reduce the, the, uh, uh, the rate of the gross excise tax, though, huh? <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> now that they have this extra leverage, this is going to mean huge revenue for the state. <clears throat> Any idea how much? Um, I, I think the last estimate I saw was like $16 million. So it's, it's not that much, but it's, it's, yeah. it's more than a drop in the bucket. Okay, so where, where is the state now? Uh, you were telling me before that, that there was legislation in this 2018 session uh, that, that, was, that dealt with the, the Wayfair case and right. that was to kind of get a jump on it somehow. Right, because um, the, the Wayfair case involved a challenge to a South Dakota law that basically said if you have uh, you know, 200 transactions or $100,000 in sales, uh, we don't care. Uh, if you have physical presence or not, we're going to tax you. Okay, so uh, so uh, we had a bill in this past legislative session to say, okay, 200 transactions or $100,000 in sales, basically saying the same thing as the South Dakota legislation did. That that got signed into law very early. Uh, it became, I think, Act 41, and uh, so we were well positioned to take advantage of the Wayfair case if South Dakota won it, which they did. So it's all set. And you were saying that July 1, it, it, it has gone into effect. That's this past July 1, um, 26 days ago. That's yeah. correct. So what, how am I going to see the change? What, what's it, how is it going to affect me? Where am I going to see this pop up at me? Uh, probably if you, if you have online purchases, uh, you'll probably see a s state sales tax tacked onto your bill where you may, might, may not have seen it before. Like if you buy from Wayfair or you, or you buy from uh, Amazon or if you buy from uh, you know a, a number of these other online shops uh, that that don't have uh, you know physical present physical stores here in Hawaii. Yeah, and this is probably happening all over the country. Yeah, same kind of effect in 50 states because no state's going to turn down extra revenue. So they're right. all passing. There, there are some states that don't have a sales tax at all. Ah, those are the ones, yeah. Which one? Oregon, right? Oregon. No example. sales tax. So right. that looks even better and better. Yeah, or Alaska. Or, yeah. or Alaska, too, yeah. yeah. Interesting. They're, so, they're, they're like about half a dozen, I think. Well, maybe they'll reconsider, you know, for the extra revenue. It's, it's, it's uh, low hanging fruit right now. You know? Right. So, but what about enforcement? So, say Amazon, you know, I, I'm, this is not the case, but say one of these uh, sellers. Um, um, doesn't doesn't charge me the tax. Um, how in the world is the state tax state tax office right here, right down the block, uh, going to enforce that against Amazon or whatever other internet seller? Yeah, well, they'll go and uh, audit them and. and uh -huh. How are they going to do that? Because that Amazon headquarters are in Seattle, I think. Well, you know, they can they can they can go places. They can right. get judicial process. They, they can get process yeah. and demand a record of all the sales that took place to buyers in Hawaii. Yeah, and then tax them. That's right. Hmm, that's going to be that, interesting. That, I mean, that does happen. Tax office is an interesting spot here. You know, on this whole issue, I've been trying to do it for a while now, and it fell into its lap essentially. Yeah, basically. <laughs> so. Uh, 
that's 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 a real uh, interesting new development in in, in the state tax world. Yeah. So, yeah. Okay. So that that means that you know, the action of the federal government in this case uh, has increased state revenues and increased the tax burden on citizens of Hawaii, in, in effect, because they weren't paying it before. Right. Um, so. At the same time, we had the Tax Reform Act passed in December of 2017, which reduced um, tax on you know, the citizens of Hawaii and the citizens of the country. What's interesting is that that reduction in many aspects ends. It's not forever. The sales tax ruling is forever. Yeah, although in Congress right now they're, they're considering Tax Reform 2.0, which is you know, what the news media now calls it. Uh, that would make a lot of these individual changes more uh, permanent. Oh, well, that would be a good thing. Then you have uh, a reduction by the federal income tax and an increase by the, the action of the Wayfair Court. So maybe, I mean, I, I know it's not the same amount of money at all, but it's an interesting yeah. juxtaposition. In the one case, we're paying less, and in the other case, we're yeah. paying more. Giveth and taketh away, right? Yeah. yeah. The Lord giveth and yeah. taketh away. <laughs> well, let's talk about the SALT thing. Um, there, you know, in the Tax Reform Act, I don't know if this is up for further discussion in Congress, but in, this, in the SALT, um, in, in the state, um, um, was it tax deduction, the deduction on, in federal tax for the tax you pay in the state, right? right? Um, there was a limitation of the deduction in, in the Tax Reform Act to ten thousand dollars. That's right. Okay. Um, so, you know, what about that? Um, um, well, there were a few high tax states, um, you know, with with Democratic governors yeah. almost exclusively yeah. uh, that didn't like that, and they and they sued. I think the the um, the lead state was New Jersey. Uh, I think New York and Connecticut also got involved, uh, and there was one more state. Um, Seven altogether. Yeah. Uh, something like that, but yeah, there was a coalition. Hawaii was not one of them. No, it wasn't. You know, Hawaii uh, through uh, Doug uh, Chen went, you went to uh, went to well the Supreme Court on immigration matters in a group of states, but not on this. It's not interesting. This. So who would be offended by this? I mean, you'd have to be paying what a lot of a lot of state income tax, right, to be limited by this ten thousand dollar federal deduction limit. Right. Um, so it would be somebody with a lot of money. Am I right? That's that's true. Yeah, it, it would be people with more liability or people in higher tax states. Yeah. So, and the argument is that this is what unconstitutional. Yeah, that's what they're saying. Can you explain that to me slowly? <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I I don't understand. Uh, you know the the, the the state's arguments. To be frank with you. Um, and, uh, this is a good reason for Hawaii not to have joined <laughs> the seven um, <laughs> plaintiffs in that case. <laughs> yeah, but they're, but they're saying stuff like it's an infringement on states' rights and uh, and you know disrupting the economy and throwing the you know the budgets of the states in, into into kilter. You know, uh, and and I'm, I'm thinking to myself, you know, what does this have to do with constitutionality of of, of a deduction? You know, deductions are what. You know what is given by legislative grace. You know. We get through this in 1916 with the validation of the income tax. Yeah, and no, I mean they're, they're, um, the the states were putting in the argument. Well, you know, here are uh, some statements by the you know the the framers of the 16th Amendment or you know stuff like that. I mean, you know, very very uh, uh, old historical records, uh, which have. I don't know, questionable relevance today. <laughs> well, you know, um, the, uh, the, the people opposing us, I, I guess that's the Republicans who passed the Tax Reform Act in the first place, are uh, saying this, has, these, this case has zero to no chance of succeeding. And that's my reaction, zero to no chance of succeeding. Tom, what is your reaction? Uh, pretty much the similar, pretty much similar. I mean, uh, when we uh, commented about uh, you know this type of argument, um, our, our, our comment was, it won't work. <laughs> I wouldn't even say nice try. It won't work. Yeah. <laughs> well, it'll be interesting to uh, follow up and see what the court says. I mean, slam dunk, been, you know, been there, done that, forget it. Yeah. <laughs> That's Tom Yamachika. He's the president of the Tax Foundation of Hawaii. And we're talking about some interesting tax uh, issues that have come up and that are pending uh, regarding state tax and also state tax as, uh, as regards federal tax. We'll be right back after this short break.
Aloha and Richard Conception, the host of Hispanic Hawaii. You can watch my show every other Tuesday at 2 p.m. We will bring you entertainment, educational, and also we tell you what is happening right here within our community. Think Tech Hawaii. Aloha. And aloha. My name is Calvin Griffin, the host of Hawaii in Uniform. And every Friday at 11 o'clock here on Think Tech Hawaii, we bring you the latest in what's happening within the military community. And we also invite all your response to things that's happening here. For those of you who haven't seen the program before, again, we invite your participation. We're here to give information, not disinformation. And we always enjoy response from the public. But join us here, Hawaii in uniform, Fridays, 11 a.m. here on Think Tech Hawaii. Aloha. Hi, I'm Ethan Allen, host on Think Tech Hawaii of Pacific Partnerships in Education. Every other Tuesday afternoon at 3 p.m., I hope you'll join us as we explore the value, the accomplishments, and the challenges of education here in the Pacific Islands. Okay, we're back. This is so exciting today. <laughs> Tax Foundation of Hawaii, Tom Yamachika, President. Okay, we're talking about these various bills, and one of them that was so interesting is the resort fee bill. And this was a bill that would have added a substantial additional tax on anything having to do with a resort, a hotel, uh, s retail in the hotel, uh, services in the hotel. Uh, it's, yeah, yeah, basically what, what the bill said uh, was that they would define resort fees as taxable. And, and re the resort fee was defined in the bill as any charge to a transient for use of the hotel's uh, property services or accommodations. Anything in the hotel. I mean, gee whiz, I just came back from the Kona Coast, you know, and they try to keep you there in the hotel. They try to offer you services and goods and retail and occupy you all day long. They don't want you to even leave the front gate. And you're spending and spending, and that's the way hotels make big bundle. Um, yeah, and right right now it's subject to GET only, like if it's if it's a meal, for example, or you know spa treatment or something like that. But the TAT comes on the hotel itself. Yeah, the TAT is on the charge for lodging. Yeah. Okay, and and, and the issue has become well, when is and, and and a lot of hotels in Hawaii do charge resort fees, mm -hmm. and and the, the question is is that also a charge for lodging? Uh, and the way the tax department had been applying it was well, if it's mandatory. So, uh, you, so you, you can't stay at the hotel without paying the resort fee, uh, then it's a charge for lodging. But if it's optional, you, and if you, you can get it removed from your bill somehow um, by you know, not, not, not spending going to the, the money, yeah. Not, not going to the spa or, yeah. or, 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 or not using internet or you know, whatever the, that, that, that charge pays for, uh, then it's optional and it's subject to GET only. But the, but the bill would have said, well, all this stuff is, is a resort fee. So um, if there's a charge on your hotel folio for meals or, or internet or you know, whatever else, it's taxable at 10.25% plus the GET. That's pretty stiff, isn't it? That, that's, that's, that's tough. That's tough. And, and it's tough, on, aside from the hotel owner, um, and, and the, the small business, I mean, you go to the neighbor islands, a lot of the businesses in the hotels are local and small. They would have to pay that, uh, and that would hurt them a lot, I think, because um, a lot of them are marginal, sorry. Um, and, the, and, and then, you, you know, you get the, the reaction of the industries is, what, what is happening in Hawaii? It's unique, isn't it? You don't find it in other states, even expensive states, even expensive destination states. Yeah, this, so is, this is like adding insult to injury. And people are going to say, let's not book in Hawaii. This is, they're, they're on us. You know, they're trying to squeeze us too much, right? Yeah, so, so, so the governor did veto the bill. Uh, and... Uh, the uh, Hawaii Logic and Tourist Association was very pleased, and I guess that's perhaps one reason why they endorsed him for re-election. <laughs> but uh... <laughs> you know, one thing, one thing that uh, that struck me though is that it got through the legislature. It, w it was a bill that was really over the top. I mean, you could see that the, the minute it was introduced. Uh, it was a bill that was, it was a finger in the eye kind of bill, call it. How did you, you get know, through? You, you know, there were several versions of the language as it went through, like, you know, House changed it, Senate changed it, Senate, House changed it back, Senate changed it back. So it was, it was tough to you know, keep your finger on exactly what version was going through. Mm. 
Okay. So, so, so I think some people may have thought, well, you know, it was their version and, and, and it was okay, when in fact it was the other version, which was not okay. Uh, okay. S slipped through at the end. It slipped through at the end. 10.5. Wow. Um, so let me ask you this hypothetical question. Nobody in the state is better qualified to answer this question, Tom. Suppose I made it 2.5. You think it would have got through that way? I don't know, man. <laughs> you, mean, you mean changing the entire transient accommodations tax? No, 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 no. The, the, uh, the extra tax, the resort fee tax. What was the percentage of it? No, it was, it was the question of whether to uh, slap TAT on it or not. Okay. Yeah, it wasn't just an, you know, another 2.5. It was like... Okay, okay. So, it's, yeah, it's hard to see. It would, yeah. you, you have to mix and match and all that, yeah. Yeah. Anyway, okay, so um, you think it could have been written in a way to get through? Oh, yeah. No, I think there were several versions uh, of the bill that, uh, were, that looked a lot like the Department of Taxation's current enforcement position, which I, which I described, you know, mandatory and so forth. But, yeah. uh, and, and those, they could have expanded are, that a little bit. Th those are okay. But if they expanded it a little bit instead of a lot, they wouldn't have had so much resistance, huh? Yeah, hard to say. Yeah. I don't think it's going to come up again, do you? Uh, we don't know. We don't know. But they could always, you know, push the, the TAT, though. Yeah, uh, yeah. Always going to get resistance. It's been pushed a lot, you know, in, in the past several years. I think um, it, it, it was just a few years ago, you know, five years ago it was like uh, seven and a quarter, then it went to eight, then it went to nine, and now it's at ten and a quarter. That's a lot. That's a lot. Yeah, we shouldn't kill the goose that laid the golden egg. We shouldn't bite the hand that feeds us. You know, I, I was telling you, I went to the neighbor islands a couple of weeks ago, and I, I realized that the hotels and all the businesses around the hotels are the economy, at least in Kona. Without the tourists there, without those hotels, they really wouldn't have much of a future. It's everything. And if we bite that hand, if for some, some reason, any reason, including climate change, uh, those those um, you know assets go away. Yeah, no, that's that's, that's always the danger. I mean, there's there's a, a supply and demand, uh, and that that uh, and there's the concept of people voting with their feet. Um, they don't have to come here. Yeah, and and the other factor is there are other places that are vying for our position on you know on, on the priorities. That's right. And uh, and they can build hotels too. And as our hotels get older, uh, our infrastructure gets older. Um, and maybe and not these, a, com these competing destinations already have the hotels. Yeah, I yeah. agree. Yeah, so something to be watched, and the legislature should be careful. I'm glad they, I'm glad the governor was careful anyway <laughs> this time. Yeah. It, it does it does go in his favor. I think that he beat up that bill. Um, okay, last item we, we need to discuss uh, is the constitutional amendment coming up in November, proposed by the HSTA. Yeah, well, what, what, what about the the, the, the new watchdoggy? You remember, oh. remember the title of this, this, this segment? Yeah, it's, it's uh, Watchdog. Okay, F Tax Foundation of Hawaii, Watchdog. The new Hawaii tax watchdoggy. That is the, and you know, you can see, especially with those glasses, how sharp they are. Oh, yeah. They're not taking wooden nickels from anyone. <laughs> not at all. It's got to be, be high quality kibble at least. <laughs> Would you describe where this is and what this is and why this is? Yeah, we have, we have a new Twitter, uh, Twitter account uh, for the Tax Foundation of Hawaii so people can kind of uh, get more up to speed on where we are at, at the moment. And it's um, at Hawaii Tax. And this is our, um, our homepage on Twitter. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you know, it doesn't have the Think Tech Hawaii logo on, on, on Twitter, but, uh, <laughs> but everything else is there. <laughs> you like that, thanks. Um, this is not your dog or dogs, is it? Uh, no comment. <laughs> okay. No comment, no comment. You can, make, you can make your own mind up about that. <laughs> yeah, but, but we, we thought that uh, we needed a, uh, you know, a, a, a voice, you know, behind the Tax Foundation, and, and, and you know, we're, we're supposed to be a watchdog, so... We got ourselves a watchdoggy. You know, you could put a, a barking sound behind behind that, behind the Twitter page. You know. uh, I don't <laughs> know how to do that. <laughs> I'll record it for you after no, the show. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Let's take a look at your re regular website so we can make the comparison of, of a conservative tax foundation of Hawaii and the watchdog tax foundation. That's that's your what is that now? That's your that, regular that's our regular webpage. website. 
Um, and it shows that uh, we have an annual lunch coming up on Tuesday, September 4th, so hopefully people can make it to that. And it has other, th other uh, things like uh, what we are, uh, what we do, and a brief history behind the foundation, in case anybody knew. Worth looking at. And the address is? Uh, tfhawaii.org. Okay. All right. Now can we talk about the amendment in November? Sure. <laughs> okay, so the HSTA pushed this thing, and I guess it pushed it through the ledge. The ledge uh, actually approved it, and this would change the way financing the schools work. Uh, what, what does it provide in substance? Okay, so it's, it's a ballot measure, so it has to be approved by the electorate, but if it does, it would give the legislature power to impose a surcharge, you know, like how the counties impose a surcharge on the GET, uh, it would allow the state to impose a surcharge on the real property tax. Okay, the counties hate it, okay, because it's, it's kind of monkeying with their uh, exclusive source of revenue and their, and their number one source of revenue. Yeah, right now the state pays all the, those expenses out of the what, general fund. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so for, this, this would impose yeah. the obligation on them to raise property taxes. And as everybody knows, there's nothing people hate more than increases in property tax. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think it would go over well, no. <laughs> so every county would have a hassle. And they, every county would have pushback on it. And, and they'd be obligated, essentially, to, well, to raise mean, money this way. Um, uh, the, the surcharge wouldn't apply to all property. It would, it would apply to investment property. Oh, not my house. Uh, not necessarily. Do you, do you live in your house? Oh, if it's a, okay, I got it. If it's, I'm renting my house, then it would apply. Yeah, yeah it, it would. Okay, and, and do, do we, is there any uniform uh, level of additional tax here, or is this the counties decide by themselves? No, it's the, it's the state that decides. The because, state. because, again, this is an amendment that would give the state legislature power to enact the tax, set the rates, uh, come up with any exemptions, if any, uh, thresholds over which, uh, you know, the tax would apply or, or, or stuff like that. So sta the counties wouldn't have much say in any of this. They have, would have no say. No say. They have no say. The state would use the real property tax mechanism to raise more money for the general fund or for the benefit of the schools, ostensibly. Right, that's correct. So in reality, from your experience, let's talk about the experience factor. How would this really work out? Okay, if it's passed and if the, the tax goes into effect, so let's say maybe half, half a billion dollars gets raised, okay? Um, yes, that half a billion dollars has to go to education and would, would have to be spent um, accordingly because there, it would be a special fund. There have been many situations. But, yeah, but, but right. what would happen to the two billion dollars that is now appropriated from the general fund to the DOE. Yeah. Okay. The, the Constitution Amendment doesn't say anything about that. So, 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 so the question, yo, oh, that's, <laughs> that, that, that's a very good possibility. Hey, we have other priorities. So wouldn't the legislature be tempted or pressured or coerced to repurposing some of the two billion dollars that now goes to DOE. There's a fair chance that would happen. Actually, if you look at so many other, you know, special funds like that, um, take the barrel tax. You know, the the money was siphoned. May I use the term siphoned? Siphoned off the barrel tax into all kinds of other things uh, in, in lieu of the purposes for which the barrel tax was originally passed. The barrel tax, as as enacted, was five cents per per barrel of of imported oil, and now it's a dollar five. Uh, per per barrel of imported oil, or the BTU equivalent of any other fossil fuel. <laughs> so you know, five cents, dollar five. That's a little bit of a difference, isn't there? And it was originally supposed to go for the, the, the development of clean energy and all this. Not not at all. It was it was supposed to create a fund to clean up this place if we had a. a an oil spill or a similar disaster okay. to the Exxon right. Valdez, okay. which, which at the time was... Ha has it remained that or has it become something else? Uh, it has mushroomed into uh, something very, very different from what it originally The was. original purpose, stated purpose of the bill, of the barrel tax was frustrated then. Yeah, and, and right now 60, 60 cents of that dollar five goes to the general fund. So we there you go. Yeah, so... So, so I mean, the general rule would be, I mean, just out of experience, that um, that if the legislature can take money that was directed over here and put it in the general fund, it will do that. 
as often as it possibly can. And, and that would happen with this HSTA uh, amendment as well, wouldn't it? Uh, well, the we, likelihood is that it, that money would wind up at least substantially in the general fund. Um, there is a good chance that, that that'll happen. I mean, uh, s special fund taxes have been raided before, okay? Uh, that, that, that happened lots of times in our history. Uh, we have had lots of raids on stuff like, you know, ERS. Uh, we had many, many, many special funds raided. Um, you know, so go to the general fund. Uh, yeah, I mean. And the, and the amendment, the language of the amendment, which is, is written already, uh, would not prevent that. It could happen oh, any session, all. any year. Not at all. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and there's no guarantee that it'll get, it, that the money raised will go to the schools because you know even even though they're they're totally um, true and faithful and, and they and they send all the special fund money to the schools well what happens to the two billion dollars in general fund money that's now going there sure yeah. sure it's, it's, it's yeah it's likely so that means I mean a guy like me I wouldn't vote for that I wouldn't vote for that because I, I can see that it's, it's really um, it's a uh, we just want it, people it, to see the facts it's, you know? a, it's a distraction yeah um, yeah, and, and, and does the Tax Foundation take position on this kind of thing? Are no, you no, taking we, position on this? No, we can't. Can we talk about you personally? Can we talk about how you would vote on it? No. <laughs> we can't do that. No, we can't do but, that. But I'm telling you, right after the show is over, I'm going to ask him again. Tom Yamachika, thank you so much for coming down. <laughs> Aloha. Hello.